The first window I'd like to take a look at is what's called the overlay window. That's these two windows right here. Now, as you'll notice, when I click back and forth between these windows, a little orange box comes up. This tells me which one of these windows is active at the moment. The first window on the left, the one that's active right now, is called the player window. The reason it's called this is because whenever you have a device hooked up to the computer that you're capturing from, this is where you see the original footage playing. This is where you can make decisions on what to capture. This is also where we can put files in that we have already captured and be able to select the in and out points before placing it down the timeline. You'll notice right down here that we have some numbers and some funky little dots. The numbers right here are your original time code that's coming off your camera or whatever your player device is. The dots down here, that's is where our levels are shown in the audio as it's coming into the computer. The window on the right hand side is called the recorder window. The reason it's called the recorder window is because this is what's playing from the timeline and it's what we're going to ultimately record back out to our recording device or put out to DVD or whatever, however we're outputting it. You'll notice that the two windows look almost exactly the same. The difference is, is that this window shows whatever's on the timeline. So whenever I place a clip down there, how I arrange it, whatever filter or transition I use on it, will be seen in this recorder window and shows me basically the finished product as I'm creating it. The next window that I'd like to look at is the timeline itself. This is where the clips go down to. This is how we arrange them. This is when we manipulate them to look the way that we want our finished product to look. In our setup, we had two video tracks. We had one title track and we had four audio tracks set up. And as you can see, when we started the program, here are our tracks right here. And this is where we lay them out. This is the timeline ruler up here that I can grab the controller and take it back and forth to be able to scrub through the timeline. And these are the buttons up here at the top that allow me to be able to have some tools at my fingertips. One of the neat things about this software, you'll notice that as I hover my mouse over any one of the buttons, it actually gives me a pop-up balloon and tells me exactly what it is. So I don't have to have what the button does memorized. And as you can see, it also shows me the keyboard shortcuts. So if I ever forget one, it's very simple. All I have to do is hover over a button and I can see my keyboard shortcut right there. When we went into setup, we set up the how many title tracks, how many video tracks, and how many audio tracks we wanted. When the program starts up, you'll see that they're all here. This is the track name area right here that has buttons in it that allows you to be able to lock the tracks, map audio channels, and, and different functions. To the right of this is where we actually lay down the video and audio and manipulate it. The next one that we're going to look at is the bin window. Eddie actually has a really neat way of being able to organize clips and being able to use them. Now you'll notice that it's broken up into two parts. I have one part here that says folder with a root folder. And then over on the right hand side, you'll see that right now all I have is a sequence. If I want to bring in a single clip, it's very simple. I double click over on the right hand side, find the clip that I want, double click on it, and it's available to me. Or if I have gone through and I have already captured all of my footage and I have separated it into different folders and have it completely organized on my hard drive, it's very simple. I right click underneath where it says root folder and go to open folder and select it. Once I have this, all I have to do is select the folder, the project that I want, select OK, and you'll see that EDIUS is going through that folder and every subfolder looking for usable media. Once it's found everything, not only does it bring the media in, but as you can see, it keeps it in all of the folders that it was in on the hard drive. So if it's organized on the hard drive, it's a very simple process to bring it in completely and totally organized, ready to work. The next window I'd like to take a look at is the effect window. Now it can be its own separate window depending upon the real estate you have on your screen. But I've combined it with my bin window so all I have to do is move to the bottom of the window, look for the effect tab and select it with my left mouse button and now all my effects are listed on the left hand side. Canopus has always been known for their filters and effects and how good they look once they're on the screen. But let's see some of the effects that we have. In your effects, you have uh, different uh, areas, such as keyers. When I select a keyer, you can see that there's 3D picture in a picture, chroma key, luma key, and then a regular 2D picture in a picture. But we also have title mixers, which are uh, transitions for titles when they're in the title track. We have our audio crossfades. 
we have transitions, and if I open up the transitions, you'll see that not only do you have 2D transitions, such as blind wipes and dissolves, but you also have 3D, you also have uh, uh, alpha. But what the neat thing about this is, is all of these transitions, except for the ones that are called explode, work in real time on the timeline, so you don't have to render them even in high definition to be able to see what their effect is going to be. We also have audio filters. We also have video filters. And Canopus has some of the best video filters uh, around. They have been known for years uh, that when you put a filter, they bring a filter into a program and you put it on. It absolutely looks great. But underneath video filters, you'll notice also color correction, such as color balance, color wheel, monotone, white balance, and YUV curve. One of the most effective things about this program, though, in the effects is the system presets. If I would open this up by selecting that little X, you're going to see underneath video filters several things such as color correction, combined filters, and whatnot. These are combinations of filters that have been created at the factory and added here. Neat thing is, if you have a combination of filters that you love and that you use all the time, you can also create your own system presets and be able to use that combination of filters over and over and over again just like it was a filter that was created by Canopus. The next window I'd like to talk about is the marker window. You'll notice right now that it's rather empty, but you'll see that there's a space for the number, the time code, and adding some comments. Let's go ahead and add a couple of uh, markers to the empty timeline just so you can see what it looks like. I have a shortcut key for, the, for setting a marker, and so if I set a marker right here by hitting the, or selecting the V key on the keyboard, you'll see a little red marker come up. If I move down a little bit, hit the V key again, you'll notice that I'm able to set these markers. Now these markers can also be placed in real time. Let's say I'm listening to music and doing a music video. If I wanted to place the markers on a certain beat that I wanted to switch my shot on, you can listen to it in real time and select the V key on the beat that you want and it will set a marker automatically for you. Now that I've added three markers to the timeline, if we go up to the window, you'll be able to see that our markers are listed right there. Numbered one through three, the time code of where they are on the timeline, and then comments. To add a comment, it's very simple. All you have to do is right underneath where it says comment, double click, and you can type in anything that you would like to add so you know what that marker is for, and it's just as simple as that. From the marker window, we want to move to the information window, which happens to be a tab right next to it. You'll notice that this window is broken up into two parts, an upper and a lower part. At this time, they're both empty, so I'm going to go down and grab a clip that we already loaded just bring it in and place it anywhere on the timeline. And you'll notice now that the upper part here is filled with all sorts of information about the clip. However, the lower part is still empty. The reason being is because this lower part is reserved for listing any filters or keyers that we've placed on that clip. So if I had a filter on this clip right now, not only would it be listed there, but I'd be able to double click on it to bring up the options window to be able to manipulate that filter. Now that we've kind of taken a look at how to set up the program and, and get it ready, Let's take a look now at how to edit with this, and you can see for yourself the ease that it is to be able to use this program to be able to get the work you need done quickly and efficiently. I'm going to go ahead and use some of the footage that we already brought in. To get one of the clips up into the player window, all I have to do is go over to the bin window, and I can either A, drag it up into the player window, or I can double click on it and it will load it up in the player window also. Once it's there, all I have to do is use my controller at the bottom of the player window to be able to go through the footage, get to the point where I want my end point, and very easily select the end button or the I key on the keyboard. And then I can either play the footage or if I already know basically where my out point is going to be, I can go to that out point, select out or the O key on the keyboard, and I've set my in and out point on the clip. To take it down to the timeline, I can either drag it from the window down to the timeline or I can select one of the edit buttons and it will drop it down uh, onto the timeline, onto the track that was selected and wherever my cursor was located.